this lecture we're going to discuss the nucleophilic addition mechanism and we will specifically talk about the nucleophilic addition uh, reaction for aldehydes and for ketones now uh, aldehydes and ketones have the same uh, exact functional group except for the fact that in aldehydes the c double bond o the carbonyl group is at the end of the chain so there's going to be a hydrogen bonded to it whereas in ketones the c double bond o group is in the middle of the chain where both sides have a carbon chain attached to it so so they're basically the same carbonyl compound um, they're similar carbonyl compounds and they're going to react with HCN a nucleophilic addition reaction would occur and the C double bond O carbon in both cases would then be bonded to an OH and it would be bonded to a CN at one end, one end. and the same would happen with the ketone as well an OH and a CN uh, group would be bonded to the carbon atom and these molecules that are formed they are called uh, they're called collectively they're called cyanohydrins now the conditions for such a nucleophilic addition reaction is that you need an NACN catalyst and you also need HCN in generally what happens is that NACN is used as a catalyst it's the starting it's the trigger that starts the reaction and the way HCN is formed in this reaction in most cases is that you mix NACN with a little concentrated sulfuric acid which results in the production of so you mix NACN with H2SO4 which results in the production of HCN molecules I'm now going to first explain to you the meaning of the term nucleophile. Now a nucleophile is a substance or it could be a molecule, an ion, an atom. It's a, it's a species which is attracted to a region of positive charge. So it's a species attracted to a region of positive charge charge now this could be a full uh, positive charge a plus one or a plus two charge or it could also be a slight positive charge because uh, so th you could have a polar bo a polar bond that has a slight positive charge so any species that is attracted to any sort of positive charge that's nucleophile and these species they have uh, they have lone pairs so they have lone pairs of electrons available so these lone pairs of electrons these electrons are going to get attracted to that positive charge so some examples of nucleophiles are we in this particular case we're going to use the cn minus one nucleophile because we're dealing with eight cn molecules so cn minus one has these has has this lone pair which is going to be attracted to the positive region in the aldehyde and ketone we can also have uh, in other cases we can have OH minus one could also act as a nucleophile, but not with aldehydes and ketones. We could also have NH three, which is also a nucleophile, but in other reactions. So these are just examples of what a nucleophile could be. Now I'm going to describe the electrophilic addition mechanism in detail, and I'm going to pick an aldehyde. So the, uh, this reaction that I've written over here, that's the that's the aldehyde which has the C double bond O group bonded next to a hydrogen atom and it's going to bond with HCN and uh, NACN is the catalyst that is used. Now remember one important aspect of this catalyst is that it produces CN minus one ions, it ionizes uh, completely and produces uh, the CN minus one ions. So the first step of the reaction is that you have an aldehyde, so you have RC double bond O and you have hydrogen next to it and you have CN minus one ions now the first step that you need to know is that this carbonyl group over here this oxygen is very electronegative so carbon gets a positive slight partial positive charge whereas oxygen gets this slight negative charge so this carbonyl group C double bond O is already very very polar and since it's polar this positive carbon over here is going to attract the electrons from CN minus one. These electrons are going to be attracted to that carbon. So as as this CN approaches this positive carbon, its electrons, its negatively charged CN minus one nucleophile, 
it's going to be attracted to this positive carbon atom. So as these electrons approach this carbon, the electrons in this double bond over here, this electron rich center, they're going to get repelled upwards. So as Cn minus one approaches, the electrons in the carbon double bond O, they get repelled upwards. So in the next step, what happens is that you get this intermediate, which looks like this, where you have uh, carbon, hydrogen, the Cn gets bonded to this carbon atom from the, from the bottom and the double bond gets converted into a single bond where this oxygen gets a minus one charge because uh, the electrons in the double bond got repelled upwards because of this Cn at the bottom. So these electrons over here, they get repelled upwards and this oxygen ends up getting a minus one charge. Now the next step is that an HCN molecule comes in where HCN is a slightly polar molecule, it doesn't ionize much, but hydrogen has a slight positive charge, CN on the other hand has a slight negative charge. Once this molecule arrives, the, the electrons in oxygen, they would be attracted to this hydrogen uh, in HCN. And as the electrons get attracted to this hydrogen, the electrons over here are going to get repelled because of the electrons that are present with this because oxygen has a has a minus one charge so it's going to repel these electrons and these electrons are going to get uh, are going to end up with cn whereas this positive hydrogen would get attracted to this oxygen so in the next step what you get is you get a cyanohydrin where the molecule has a cn bonded at the bottom uh, the carbon has an o bonded and it gets bonded to a hydrogen and the cn nucleophile gets regenerated remember these were uh, these were acting as a catalyst so they get regenerated they get reformed so that's the reaction mechanism it's a two-step reaction mechanism this is your first step and this over here is your second step of the mechanism so remember um, and I'm going to go over the whole mechanism again remember that the mechanism is exactly the same whether it's an aldehyde or a ketone so you have this uh, carbonyl group CW1O which is a polar bond and this carbon has a positive charge whereas this oxygen has a negative charge. This Cn-1 nucleophile which is coming from the catalyst that we study that we discussed earlier this Cn-1 catalyst would get attracted to this positive carbon atom and as it slowly approaches this positive carbon atom the electrons in the double bond this electron rich center they get repelled upwards and in the next step this Cn ends up bonding with the carbon at from the bottom and the electrons in the double bond, they got repelled. So this oxygen gets a minus one charge and it has these, these pair, extra pair of electrons that were, uh, that came from the double bond when the double bond got repelled upwards. Now this oxygen is going to attract the positive hydrogen in HCN and it's going to bond with that and it's going to form an OH, uh, OH group. And so it's going to form an alcohol group, whereas the electrons in the in the bond in HCN, they're going to get repelled because of the negative charge over here. So only H would get attracted, the positive H would get attracted and the electrons in the bond are going to get repelled. So you get you get a CN minus one nucleophile. So we started off with a CN minus one nucleophile coming from the catalyst. We ended also with a CN minus one nucleophile being regenerated. So NACN was acting as a catalyst in this reaction and this results in the formation of a cyanohydrin. So cyanohydrin is a substance which has a cyanide group, a cyano group and a hydroxy group both present in a single compound. Now just for the sake of clarity I'm also going over the mechanism, uh, the same mechanism, exactly the same uh, the reaction uh, uh, st stages and the same mechanism for ketone. So this over here is a is a ketone. It's uh, butanone, and it has this C double bond O carbonyl group, which is already polarized. So it has a, sl a slight positive charge on carbon atom, and it has a slight negative charge on this oxygen atom. And again, you have these Cn minus one nucleophiles. Uh, approaching this positive carbon atom being attracted to it and as the CN uh, approaches and tries to bond with this carbon atom the electrons in this bond in this uh, double bond the pi electron cloud is going to get repelled upwards so in the next step this oxygen gets a minus one charge because electrons in the bond they got repelled upwards 
and the CN ends up bonding with the carbon atom. And in the, in the last stage, in the second stage, this negative oxygen then attracts this positive hydrogen atom and the electrons in the bond, they get repelled uh, towards CN because of this negative charge on oxygen. And the two end up bonding and form, they end up forming an OH group, a hydroxy group. So a hydroxy group is formed and the CN minus one nucleophile is again regenerated and you, it results in the formation of a, of a cyanohydrin. So the reaction scheme, the reaction mechanism is exactly the same for whether it's an aldehyde or a ketone.